Hello and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Kapu Ramasubramanian from Disha Consulting. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer of Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management to understand how they got there and to talk with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we are joined by Kapu Rama Subramanian, the founder and principal of Disha Consulting. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest, but in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Kapu, hello and welcome. Hi, Shannon. Um, it's really a pleasure to be on your pod- podcast, and uh, I'm thrilled to uh, have this discussion. I'm looking forward to it. Well, me too. We recently um, connected through LinkedIn. I'm so excited. We've had some great conversations already. So I'm really excited to learn more about you and where how you got to where you are today. But let's start with that. So you're the founder and principal at Disha Consulting. So tell me, what type of business is Disha Consulting? So it is a consulting firm focusing on data management and analytics, but I would call this or position this more of a management consulting or business consulting with a focus on data management analytics. And I can probably explain uh, why it is so. So I founded this company with a passion to uh, help organizations or empower organizations to use data to, uh, to deliver business outcomes or turn data into wins, but do it with confidence. So if when I say that, starting with the raw data and turning it into business outcomes, there's a lot that happens in between. So you need to uh, integrate data and then get insights from data and then make decisions or take actions based on the insights and then deliver business outcomes. So, so I, I empower organizations during this transformation. I call this a transformation of data, like caterpillars, uh, you know, becoming a butterfly. Um, and uh, I help them in various ways through my advisory and consulting services. I'm the sole proprietor and personally have work with, the, uh, with my customers. Uh, for example, uh, you, I support in... Um, helping understand the business strategy or the organizational strategy of the institutions, and then develop data uh, analytics or AI strategy that are in alignment with the business strategy, and then also can execute that strategy. Or uh, I help them implement data governance program or assess the maturity of the data governance program and uh, find gaps depending on where they want to go and help them revamp data governance. Or it could be um, uh, helping them uh, implement uh, data literacy programs or with business intelligence solutions uh, and uh, helping them uh, with the advisory and consulting to uh, various ways to uh, do the research and analysis to finding the right tools and technologies for implementation. So there are multiple ways that I uh, help organizations. Currently, I am focusing on higher education and academic medical centers, Uh, but uh, the approach that I use can be applicable to other sectors as well. Uh, When I say my approach, I, with the expertise in data analytics and technology, I use more of business focused and human centric approach um, that can be applicable to other sectors as well. For example, the reason I said it is more of a management or business consulting is because when you look at data management, 
improving data quality or improving uh, or implementing data governance or moving the organization to be more of a data driven towards a data driven culture you address it's all uh, focused on cultural change rather than technology ch uh, change it addresses management issues it addresses business uh, 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 issues and also it is a it addresses a lot of cultural uh, nuances. So that is why I feel that it is more of a management consulting firm, but with a focus on data analytics. That's so smart and and so appropriate, right? Because you know that's what so many people and data practitioners struggle with, right? Is is you know if you approach it to talking about all the things that you need to do with the data you know it's so hard to understand the roi but if you approach it from the here's what we're going to the business results we're going to get yeah and here's how, how we're the insights we're going to get then it's just a much different conversation that that's exactly correct yeah yeah data management and analytics in my opinion they're you know it's a the, the teams they are value creators rather than cost centers and that's what we need to be focusing on yeah yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I love it. So as the founder and principal, you talked a little bit about what you do and working with your customers, you know, but um, so how do you work with data in your job? So um, I use, so there are two aspects, H how I use data, how I work with data when I'm helping the customers. And another aspect is how I use data uh, myself. So if I want to focus on the first aspect uh, as to how I'm helping the customers, uh, before I jump into that, I want to make a note of something that I uh, frequently observe is when I'm working with stakeholders and uh, they want to accomplish something, they jump right into data. I want to do this. I want to make a decision. I want data from here, 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 here. These are the things. But I truly believe that that has to be, again, like based on what you just mentioned, if you want to really drive the value, we need to start with the dialogue as to what it is that you want to achieve, what are your key business questions, and then get into how, with what data do you really want to get in order to answer your uh, key business questions, and, and then that gives you the direction. So my philosophy is dialogue, data, and then direction. So when you get into data, I can give a few examples uh, based on um, my work in higher education and also the clients I support in higher education. So higher education, there are two major pillars. It's education and research. If you put academic medical centers in the mix, it's also education, research, and uh, clinical or patient outcomes. So for example, when uh, if you look at the student uh, domain, it depends on the organization again. So it could be the, the institution, uh, the priority may be to in, increase student enrollment. So in that case, uh, the, you look at the enrollment uh, data. Uh, it, there are some institutions, they are pretty good because uh, you know the enrollment is pretty good, but we do want to focus more on the student population, the diversity, um, uh, diversity of the student population, or it could be that we want to support uh, up, upward mobility, then you look at more of the demographics of the student data. So sometimes uh, in certain uh, institution and in certain schools, such as let's say, uh, School of Engineering, um, uh, then you look at uh, in engineering, we want, you know, that there are certain students who declare their major when they intended major when they apply, but later on, they don't stick with the major. So they want to understand what it is, uh, what are the factors that are impacting or that are making them to change their decisions, right? So in that case, you need to look at, uh, is it because if it is uh, engineering, is it uh, are there more, uh, is it impacted by gender or is it a certain uh, demographics of students who are switching more than the other demographics or is it from a certain location or transfer students? So it, it depends on what it is that you are really looking at. So that is in the student sector. 
uh, and in the research sector that again, the research intensive universities, they want to increase research, let's say for example. So if they want to increase research or increase research productivity, then the question would be what exactly that, uh, what do you exactly mean by that? What are the questions? So it could be that we want to know the uh, awards uh, from uh, agencies. We want to look at research expenditures uh, and then the collaboration of the faculty members, or it could be the publications. So there are different areas. Then you get into, is it from one source or is it integrating data from multiple sources that would give you the insight? So you can um, take actions, for example, <clears throat> one of the actions could be that you want to hire faculty members and uh, working in certain research areas. And then later on, you may want to look at the ROI on that investment. So depending on that, I help guide them to use data in different ways, uh, but always connecting with their strategic priorities. So the other aspect, like you just to ask, like how am I using the data? I do a lot of research uh, and uh, reading uh, research articles and I attend conferences. So, uh, and I talk to peer institutions. So sometimes I understand from them, uh, for, for example, I attended the Gartner uh, Conference uh, 2024 uh, Data Analytics Summit. I learned that uh, there are one, only one out of three teams, uh, data analytics team are, is really effective. So then I dig into finding what are the pitfalls? What are the factors that help them to be successful? What are the factors that are um, really, uh, that they are struggling with? And then, so things like that, I collect information and also the tools and technologies, like uh, what are the peer, in, in case of higher education, I look at, uh, uh, you know, what are the, what is the governance tool uh, that they are utilizing? What are the technology, are they using Microsoft Fabric? Or what are the visualization tools or data management tools and why they are using and pros and cons? So these are all data, these are all information. So when I'm supporting a certain institution, depending on their particular need that I'm able to be uh, more informed and uh, help them navigate uh, the space. I like it. Lots of data usage there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so Kapu, tell me, you know, is, is this what you wanted to be when you grew up? Did you think to yourself when you were six, like, I'm going to grow up and be the founder and principal of a uh, business advisory consulting <laughs> firm? No, definitely not. Uh, when I was <laughs> little, maybe six, seven, eight years old, I wanted to be a teacher. Uh, oh, I yeah. really admired my teachers and I, uh, I wanted to be uh, like them. Uh, later on in high school, uh, I wanted to be a physician, but here I am. I'm not a teacher and I'm not a physician. Oh, I love that. You know, it's how, you know, as we discover things, you know, it's just so funny how things change. So, so you're in high school, you want to be a physician. So where did you go from there? Where, what did you, where did you go? What did you do? So it started with my dad. He was a physics professor and uh, he mm -hmm. influenced me and inspired me to go into physics. So I got my bachelor's degree in physics from India. Um, so, so that's what I did. And then immediately after I graduated uh, with an undergraduate degree, I moved to the US uh, with the intention to pursue higher studies. Uh, once I came here, uh, I got really interested in computer science. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was fascinating to me that I can really code something and make the computer do something that I want the computer to do it was fascinating. So I got into computer science, uh, uh, got my master's degree in computer science from University of Cincinnati. Nice. Uh, then I went from there, uh, started my uh, career. <clears throat> so where? So what was your first job out of college? 
out of after getting your master's? So, uh, yeah. Um, so I did uh, take my first job was a software developer and I stayed uh, in that role, but with different uh, institutions for quite a while. Uh, for example, initially, I uh, worked with a financial institution developing um, loan system software uh, using .NET programming and uh, Oracle as the back end. So uh, I was one among a few other developers, and it was really um, exciting. I can still remember the day that it went live, and it was deployed in more than 4,000 workstations. It was like Oh, the interface I did, the coding I did, it, you know, like it is, it is on uh, people's uh, people's uh, computer, and they are utilizing it. Was a really a, a very, uh, it was thrilling. Um, ah. So looking back, actually, I can see now see as a data practitioner. Now I can appreciate the importance of putting validations in the code. Uh, for example, the phone number should be in certain format. The, make sure the zip code mm. are five digit. And if you're collecting customer data in one module, and if you're uh, collecting customer data in another module, you don't have to. If it is already there, bring it up uh, mm -hmm. so there is no data discrepancy, right? So think yeah. But all that, I really, really appreciate the uh, importance of data quality and making that happen right when you're coding at the source. So now mm -hmm. I'm looking at bringing data from this source and that source, <clears throat> but it's really fascinating to think the source was, you know, what I coded, you know, like but back, uh, you know, like a few years ago, like, uh, like you are inserting records. So you are producing data is really intriguing. So, well, yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, it's a great example of, you know, how you're not thinking in terms of the data, you're just thinking the end result of what you want to achieve and how to do it in an efficient, most efficient way. Right. Yeah, and have exactly. It similar uh, efficient formatting and, uh, have some data quality. Yeah, exactly. The data quality right at the source is, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, and, and it jumped around a, a bit. Uh, from there, I supported, uh, I went uh, to take on a role with the uh, clinical research unit uh, for uh, coding in .NET, but uh, within two weeks, I was pulled in um, to implement SAP. Uh, I had no idea about SAP. Uh, but uh, I uh, was asked to coordinate all the technical aspects of SAP FICO implementation, which I did. I learned a ton. I worked with uh, experts from Germany. I worked for the subject matter experts within the organization. And I also worked with the technical uh, implementation team who were, who were external vendors. Um, and they sent me for training and I learned SAP, uh, uh, you know, I attended SAP courses and I also learned ABAP programming through that, even though I didn't use ABAP in that particular role, but in the okay. next role, um, the a private uh, higher education institution, they pulled me in to um, uh, program in ABAP to implement HR module. So I switched from .NET to ABAP programming. Uh, but uh, looking back, I really liked the coordination of uh, various aspects and utilizing best practices and implementing the, uh, the first ASAP FICO. Um, so what I did was I decided it was a hard decision but I decided to move from being uh, in this in the trenches coding to being a, a project manager. So I got my PMP certification and took my mm. took on a role as a program manager at another uh, financial firm where I had a portfolio of projects that I led. Um, that was my next job. Uh, so two more jobs in between before I uh, started my own consulting firm. Oh, so then that's, and I love that you're just following this path of uh, passion um, and just 
constant learning, constant curiosity of things that you can learn and, and discover that you like. Um, it's a very common theme, even though there's so many different paths into data and what I've heard over the uh, last couple of years, you know, is, you know, it's, it's just that following your passion and people mostly fall into data because as a result, um, I, I love that, especially, you know, yeah, I mean, coming here to the States, making this major <laughs> yeah. move and life transforming, you know, decision and then going, you know, I'm, it's not going to be physics. I'm going to, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go in something different. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I, I absolutely love that. So then what made you want to start your own company? So, uh, as I mentioned, that after the the program manager job, I did uh, join a federally funded research and development center. It's a not for profit, and they supported uh, uh, federal agencies. So, as a trusted advisor role uh, with many different projects, mostly systems engineering, and uh, yeah. for for example, one was the uh, advice, uh, uh, actually, uh, business process transformation for one of the agencies. So that is, again, utilizing data to know how the current process works and what changes we need to do to make it more efficient. So you use metrics in multiple ways to show that it is not efficient uh, currently and why you need to make the change. And in another role, uh, I uh, helped uh, the the another agency they were establishing a project management office uh, and I helped the director with uh, implementing best practices and uh, IT governance and uh, uh, stage gates and all that with the investment management practice again measuring the performance of each project return on investment on projects to see whether it's a go or no go at various stages so again you use metrics and the, another one that influenced me the most was um, helping another agency with uh, uh, federal acquisition and contracting. That is with huge IT contracts that included uh, applications development or even uh, uh, desktop support and data management, master data management and all that where moving away from kind of a statement of work practice to more of a performance-based contracting and also utilizing data from uh, various different uh, uh, acquisition and contracting um, to really think through and implement strategic sourcing. So I got more and more of utilizing data to move the organization strategically um, so initially, it is more of executing uh, projects and uh, working on the projects coding. Now it is more in the advisory role of how you utilize data to strategically move the organization to another uh, towards what they want to achieve. So that really intrigued me to get into, uh, you know, exploring the data space. Uh, I wanted to get more into data management uh, uh, so that led me, I got a fantastic opportunity to be the founding director and uh, chief data officer of an uh, uh, academic medical center where uh, started from scratch, established the mm -hmm. data analytics program. Uh, I was in that role for about five years. Um, I was uh, responsible for um, to forging from forging the vision to developing this strategy, developing and implementing governance, uh, data engineering, data management, and uh, analytics and BI solutions. So that really propelled me in that direction, and I felt that that is where I want to be. Uh, but I in, uh, I wanted to support more and more organizations. So I thought starting my own company and uh, doing this will. Uh, Will, will enable me to help not just one institution, but uh, many institutions. So that so here I am, um, uh, you know, the founder and principal of Disha Consulting. It's not only for data, but for helping people and organizations achieve some, uh, a goal. 
it's just amazing. I really like that a lot. And I love that you have a, a PMP certification thrown in there too, uh, to help with that. More and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education, but still have questions about its value, purpose, and how to get the ball rolling. Introducing the newest monthly webinar series from Dataversity, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy, where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions. Learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net. And I have to say, you know, I, I, I'm going to sidetrack and go back a little bit. So working with medical research, that's a lot of data. Yeah, that uh, the we did not really use the medical research data. It was more focusing on administration uh, mm -hmm. and finance. So uh, I never mm -hmm. had to really work with the research data. That is an entirely different field. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah. Uh, I also want to add that um, when I was working with the Academic Medical Center, when we established and things were going well, again, with the, uh, the advancement in technology, it is one thing to do descriptive analytics, and then you need to be able to do predictive and prescriptive. So uh, again, as a continuous learner, I love learning. So I uh, got a couple of certificates, uh, one in data science certificate from Berkeley, and I also got another business analytics certificate from Wharton, again, with the intention to be able to have that knowledge and expertise and uh, to help not just with data management, but with also with the advanced analytics and uh, AI space um, to be able to uh, help uh, uh, different clients. Very nice. So tell me what's been the biggest lessons so far in your career? Um, I have a, a, quite a few lessons, but I can just tell you a couple. Uh, one is I would like to echo, I listened to your uh, CEO, Tony Shah's uh, podcast, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. he mentioned that understanding the business, I think that is, I want to echo that, and I add something to it. For example, understanding the business is really, really important. Um, and so, uh, and uh, so that was another reason I, I missed this in my uh, in my from where I got here. So in order to formally get the business uh, knowledge and uh, understanding economics and finance, I did went back to school after 17 years and I got uh, my MBA from Virginia Tech. Um, so I did that. So because I thought that I'm understanding, but I'm not quite understanding without uh, that degree. So I thought that formal education would help that, uh, and I did. Uh, I did not have much knowledge on economics and uh, management. So I, that gave me that background and uh, aptitude to uh, understand the stakeholders and give me the big picture. Um, so whether you have a formal degree or not, I think it is really important to know the business you are in and how your leaders, the executives think about what they want to achieve because at a different, the altitude is different. So that also helps anyone, whether you are an individual contributor or you have a team, able to connect your individual contribution to the overall impact in the organization and how you are supporting dif different stakeholders. And uh, the another aspect to this is it really helped me uh, getting the MBA degree and uh, having a different dimension from the management and uh, leadership and strategy and all that gave me the appreciation to um, uh, listen uh, more deeply to understand uh, uh, their perspective and also help me to understand that you, uh, especially in a major transformation or transformation project, uh, major, ma many of the projects that I worked on ended up being an uh, organizational transformation. And I consider myself a change agent. Maybe I was attracted to those, I don't know. It is really hard to help an organization through transformation 
including data-driven transformation as an individual, or even if you have a, a big team, you cannot, you and your team cannot do this alone. You need the support from various stakeholders at different levels. That is so important. So in order to gain that, having this multidimensional perspective, whether you get it through formal education or you get it through, you know, you have to be intentional about it. So you gain the trust. So to bring them along uh, to uh, move through the transition. So that is the biggest lesson uh, I have learned. And I try to listen deeply and understand uh, uh, different perspectives. Um, I, I'm not perfect, uh, but uh, you know, like every time um, I fall behind, I uh, make an intentional effort next time. Um, that is one. And the second one that I would say is as you move through uh, different uh, uh, leadership roles, especially in the data management and analytics space, it is uh, inevitable you are going to be um, uh, having hurdles and obstacles. Um, so uh, the one lesson I have learned it is uh, to look um, for opportunities and diversities. And it is not easy, but uh, I'm training myself and I've learned that if you're intentional about it, there are multiple ways that you can tackle a problem, even if it is uh, if uh, you know during challenging times. That's so true. It is so true, right? And yeah. so many people get fixed on the one path, but there's so always so multiple ways to multiple ways. To yeah. do. Mm -hmm. You just need to think out outside the box. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So having uh, been involved in data for through most of your career, do you see uh well first what's your what is your definition of data? <laughs> um I have an analogy. I, I think uh, data is a strategic asset and it's everyone's business. But I think of data as diamonds. And uh, the, 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 the reason being, you mine diamonds. So you mm -hmm. mine data, you extract data from various different sources. And then mm -hmm. you clean the diamonds and you uh, and so you clean data, you make sure that it is in the right format and uh, it is... Uh, uh, accurate and complete. Uh, again, you polish, uh, you cut the diamond. So uh, here you slice and dice data differently, integrate data, slice and dice to get the insight from it. So there is value. Uh, and then you polish the diamond. And similarly, you, you can, uh, from the insight you get, you present it in a dashboard or some sort. Uh, so it is uh, really nice. Um, then the five finally that you set the diamond in a in a in a, in your ring or in a necklace or something. So is the insight you get from data is uh, being utilized in taking actions and decisions. So that's how I see data. Love, that. and I know some dashboards that could use a higher uh, score in them. <laughs> But um, uh, so uh, that so do you see then the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next ten years, and why? Um, so the data management jobs are really critical, and I cannot say if uh, if it is going to be increasing or decreasing, but I don't see the importance is going to decrease uh, for various reasons because. But it is going to be evolving, is what I'm. Uh, what I think, for example, with AI automation, um, okay. the there are many data management tasks can be automated and streamlined. But however, I really think human intervention is needed to provide input, uh, to provide context, and also interpret. Uh, so. AI is actually is a way to enhance human expertise, not necessarily replace human expertise. Um, and uh, another thing is like, uh, I'm saying that it is an evolving field uh, because at the Gartner conference, there are um, the evolving roles, such as there, there is um, roles such as AI ethicist, 
uh, the prompt engineer, right? And uh, mm -hmm. uh, data product manager and data uh, ethicist. And uh, so there are these uh, roles that are emerging. So data management roles probably would emerge, uh, uh, not emerge, would evolve, uh, but it would be a combination of, uh, to address the technology advances as well as the ethical considerations. So it has to morph into something or evolve into something, but it won't be, um, uh, it may not be the same in 10 years what it is now, but uh, I cannot see it is going to be even more um, important as more and more organizations are going to be becoming data driven. Absolutely agree. So what advice then would you give to people who are looking to get into a career in data management? So, um, so I'm assuming that they are not in data management or related fields currently. There, there could be two, two categories, right? One, people right out of college or they got some certification and they are looking for a, for a job. Or it could be they are in a different roles, let's say marketing or sales, but they are not into the data space that they want to get into. So first of all, I want to say that even though we keep talking about scarcity in data management or analytics uh, skill set, it is really hard to for someone who is getting trying to get into this field to make themselves visible and navigate the space. So it is really, really hard. And uh, I want to acknowledge that. So first of all, I would say, um, if possible, uh, in both categories, whether you are in a, in the already in a job, but in a different role, or you're looking for a job in the data management field, if possible, find a mentor. So yeah, finding a mentor would definitely help uh, uh, provide some guidance, uh, brainstorm ideas, and also introduce to uh, other people so you can network. So that leads into networking. So uh, network, network, network by, um, you can be part of uh, attending conferences, even if conferences are expensive, there are virtual sessions and there are industry meetups. So try to connect with people, uh, even if you are not in that space, connect with people in that space. Um, that is the second uh, uh, advice I would give. The third would be to keep current in the skills, uh, keep learning, keep reading more and more articles. Uh, and also, um, if you are able to find a even a voluntary position or internship, uh, utilize the skills you have learned uh, to work on a voluntary project. And then that can add to your resume. Um, and uh, then uh, if you're already in a job, uh, I would say, well, I, this has happened because again, thinking out of the box, what can you do? You can uh, mention to your manager that you are interested in getting in that space. Make that part of your performance, you know, like your growth uh, uh, objective. And uh, you can also, you know, like I cannot see if you are in a department and if there, there is no data analytics uh, uh, team in your own department, but your department is, let's say, depending on uh, a central team. So you can always say like, uh, I would like to work with the central team and uh, contribute to bring back value to your own department. So there are multiple ways that you can uh, you can um, get to it, but it is definitely not going to be easy. Um, so having a mentor uh, and also celebrate the success, even if you're not achieving a job, uh, the end goal, even small steps. Oh, I'm able, I was able to meet two people. I was able to talk to them about it. Uh, that is a progress uh, made towards uh, uh, achieving your final goal. So celebrate every step of the way and uh, having a peer group is definitely going to help. Uh, and uh, I don't want to diminish, uh, make it sound easy uh, uh, in this, uh, you know, like uh, with the LinkedIn and uh, uh, the recruiting uh, with the AI, it is, it's really hard to f know where to target. So that's my advice. 
It's very, very good advice. Uh, I was uh, listening to a coach on the Nike Run Club app, you know, and he's saying something very similar, you know, to, you know, celebrate the fact that you just started. Yeah. And just, you know, like <laughs> you took that first step and woo, you know, <laughs> like the biggest part is, it's, is that's true. Yeah. You, you know, you, yeah, yeah. So always celebrate the small things. And I agree. So it just makes it so much, ev- everything so much easier. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. 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 And mentors do help so much yeah. along the way. Absolutely. No. And I, you know, I talk, I've talked about it often in this podcast, just, you know, it took me way too long to realize I can't do it all on my own. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you, you know, you're never a one man show. You just have to, you know, it's, it's always, you know, life is about collaboration. Yeah. It takes a uh, village. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Everything does. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Oh, Kapu, this has been so lovely to get to know you and to hear your story. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, you know, how, if somebody wanted to solicit your services, how would they find you? I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, so I don't have a website for my company. Uh, I'm actually working on it. So LinkedIn is the best way to reach me. I love it. And we'll get that, that link that you're out to in the post it in the podcast website as well. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. But thank you so much, uh, Shannon, for the opportunity. I'm really uh, passionate about this subject. And uh, you gave me an opportunity to express my passion. Well, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much. And to all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date on the latest podcast and in the latest in data management education, you can go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time, stay curious, everyone. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Thank you.